Extreme Collectibles here with day five of 10 days of statues. So first and foremost, this is a day a lot of you have been waiting for. I am going to do a room tour. Not a man cave tour, a room tour. In my man cave, I actually have seven different rooms full of statues. This is gonna be one. I have done one before that's changed my uh, theater room, so go check that out if you haven't seen it yet. Before I start, I have a few disclaimers. Disclaimer number one, you're not gonna get to see me as much because I'm gonna be on the other side of the camera, which is okay, because it's three in the morning and I just woke up, and I wanna take my kids to the zoo today, so I need to get this done. They don't know we're going to the zoo, and I think we're gonna go to Magianos, yeah? You like Magianos? Anyway, uh, disclaimer number two, is I'm going to use my cell phone where I traditionally use a camera, so if, the, uh, if it's a little bit different, uh, keep that in mind. I'm trying it out for uh, NYCC, so heads up on that. Disclaimer number three, not everything is complete. I still have some shelving and stuff like that I'm switching out, so I will show you what I have and we'll go from there. And the last disclaimer is please note this is my collection. I display it for me. So while any feedback, positive or negative, is welcome, please don't tell me I should do something differently because it's displayed for me, not for you. I appreciate that. So with that, let's go ahead and get started of my extreme poker room tour. said this is room two of seven the first room is the theater room which I have done an older review on that an older room tour so go ahead and check that out it has changed quite a bit since then I'm actually currently standing in the theater room this is what I call the music and poker room so prior to statues taking over it was a poker table in the middle you can actually flip up that uh, table and on the other side is a felt poker table you see it in some of my earliest on reviews and then I have a bunch of music memorabilia, autographs signed on the walls. That is something we will look at at a later time. So nowadays, is this is where all the magic and the filming happens, if you recognize the Spider-Man display. And you can see some editing components on the table right there. I did remove the lighting as it reflects off some of the cases and it just wouldn't make so good. But let's kind of dive in. Here's a temporary display on the side here. These are a lot of people ask where these cabinets come from. They are Walmart, Home and Garden. So this is going to be a fantastic four display. Eventually Maja cases will take over. At the bottom you have Sideshow's Legendary Galactus Bust. I recently picked this up. I did do a review. I have not posted it yet. I have Sheridan Deuce's custom thing, and then I have some custom Fantastic Four pieces coming with Silver Surfer, another Doctor Doom, and another Thanos to add to uh, this display, and it's going to kind of catty corner around the side. Over here, the counter, this is kind of some of my uh, doctoring stuff. I keep extra pieces, some glue, as we know, shit does happen. Over here is Spider-Man. So a number of pieces, I think XM is just killing the Spider-Man line uh, with the villains, but there's also some other great pieces. So starting up top here, we have XM Spider-Gwen. Very cool piece. I got this from Spec Fiction. Three different switch outs. I have done a review on her, as well as Sideshow's Miles Morales right next to it. Review is done on him. I have not done a review on this custom Spider-Man. The light up pole does light up. I'm not a big fan of light up features too often. I just don't use them. Then we have Sideshow's Green Goblin. I do plan on replacing this guy with a custom one that I have on order, but I think it's a fabulous piece. And 
Next we have XM Mysterio. This is a completely underrated piece in my opinion. Then Sideshow Comicette Spider-Man. Again, a very underrated piece. This is one of those pieces that until you see it in person, you really just can't get a good appreciation for it. XM Scorpion, I was lucky enough actually to get this below retail because I pre-ordered it like a year before it came out. I think the hype's a little, uh, he's a great, great piece, don't get me wrong, but I think the hype's a little too much on him because of such a low ES. And then Custom Hobbs, four different switch outs. I have done a review on him. I think I've done a review. I did a review on the XM Scorpion as well. Then moving into the Maja cases. So these are uh, DF120s, if anyone's wondering. But we have a custom doppelganger. Made by the same group that actually did the Hobgoblin right above it. I've done a review on him. Then moving over to XM Venom. So this is the only Venom I display at my home. I have uh, like 10 other Venoms at my office. Eventually we'll, we will do an office tour. XM Carnage, again, I think another completely underrated piece. Looks so good, so many different switch outs. I do have a custom Carnage coming from the same group that's doing the custom Green Goblin. So that may unseat that. An XM Lizard, again, another very underrated piece. I do have felt on order for this shelf, so it matches the rest of it. But this is a uh, DF-130. Then below him, one of my favorite characters, I'm so glad somebody did it, uh, Morbius. This is a custom quarter scale. I did a review on him as well. I also need to get a light installed right above him, so that's why it looks so dark. You see I'm wearing pants today because I know there's reflections. Then moving over, I did the review as Gem Mint on XM Electro. Currently the best Electro on the market. I think there's some opportunity with him still though. I think I would really, even though they have a modern uh, switch out for him, I like a modern badass Electro. And then Sandman, again, another very underrated piece. I think this piece right here kind of proves that space is extremely important because he takes up so much space. A lot of collectors just don't go for him. So then moving back up, I have shit on my windowsills and I get questions all the time. Aren't you worried about uh, sunlight? Well, not only do I have UV protectant, but I actually have brown film on my windowsills. So let me see if I can kind of show you what I mean. So I keep a close eye on them, make sure it's not fading. To date, I haven't got anything. So moving over to the section to the right of Spider-Man, this is what I call my movie collection, particularly first is my horror collection. This is Sideshow, all Sideshow right here, starting with uh, Jason. I think this is the most badass station, uh, Jason statue out there with the exception of ECC's new piece. But I wanted to stick with uh, quarter scale. Followed closely by Freddy, same opinion regarding this Freddy and the ECC. Some awesome base work on all of these. And then moving over, Leatherface, adding to the trio. And the one that I'm missing is a Mike Myers, but I do have a custom one on order that should be arriving in a few months. So he will actually take the place of the Lord of Darkness of Tim Curry. Still cracks me up, this is Tim Curry. So this is the exclusive. I've had this statue for years and years and years. I foolishly overpaid for him back when I was new to statue collecting. I paid like $1,500, which we've all done. Then below this horror line are large, larger horror pieces that I keep on the floor because I have some custom risers coming. So first, PCS Howling, my favorite werewolf movie of all time. I've done a review on that guy. 
followed by Dream Figures Mummy. The review has been done on him. And ARH Medusa. I wanted the Rattlesnake one, but I got her, I think, like $800, $700 shipped a long time ago. So I just couldn't pass that up because shipping alone is like $300 on her two huge boxes. And she is a great piece. I just wish she was more evil like she is in the uh, Rattlesnake one. So moving over is kind of what I call my movie collection. So first, whoa, <clears throat> we have Tremors. If you don't know what Tremors is, this is a custom piece. I technically don't know what scale this is. I don't know if I've done a review on him or not. I don't think I have, I may have. And uh, no, I haven't. Uh, this is probably 1 20th of what they are in real life. And here we have our movie pieces. So starting at the front, you have T2 Sideshow, completely underrated piece. You can get this for like $300 or cheaper sometimes. T2 is one of the best movies of all time in my opinion. Followed by a custom quarter scale blade. Eventually, I will do a review on this guy. And he has like 30, 40 switch outs. He just looks awesome. And the base is just killer if you've never seen it. I have done a review on this HCG uh, Sill statue. It's okay. I got it for a hundred and something dollars. Then, same people who made the custom Hobgoblin. And the custom uh, doppelganger made this crow piece right here, which I think is awesome. To me, the crow is a really, really good movie, but I think conceptually it was better than the execution. While there were some really cool things in there, but I absolutely love the character. And then behind him, another villain, Mularam. Temple of Doom, this is Sideshow. And again, just an awesome piece. I'm still waiting on somebody to make an awesome Indiana Jones I like. Sideshow's done a few. I've been tempted to pick up the Sideshow Temple of Doom Jones. And of course, you guys have seen the review on my Iron Studios Vader. So those are, uh, kind of, these are kind of my villain, anti-villains on top. And then below, we kind of have my heroes, so to say, with, with a little bit of exception. But inside the Magicase Max 140, starting at the back there, you have Blitzway Rocky 2. Just an awesome, awesome piece. Sideshow's Conan in the middle. Another awesome piece. I think the scale's a little bit off on it. It's a premium format, but it looks more like one-fifth. The Rocketeer, just great, great piece. And then we got a Robocop set up in the front. So we got uh, Chronicle Collectibles, Kane, and then Hot Toys, Ed 209, and Robocop. These will probably go eventually because they're not quarter scale. And you see... Some of the rubber fell down there in the last day or so. So Magicase has panels that they have rubber strips that are removable to keep them set. And let's get a side view of this stuff over here. So at the end, one thing I'm trying to do, I'm trying to show you guys close-ups and then how the collection looks from farther away at the end i'll try and grab spider-man again even though you guys kind of see that every time i do a review so there's the horror collection followed by the movie collection And you see a Wolverine in there because next to this is part of my Wolverine setup. So this is ever-changing, a lot going on, but I have a Max 140 next to the Max 50 cube there. 
So on top I have some Wolverine dioramas. And most of my Wolverine pieces, I think all of them I have reviewed. Let's start at the back here. We have the ARP Custom Logan. So the Hulk, eventually he'll probably go up here, but he's with my Avengers setup right now because all my other Hulks are at my office. So I have done a review on this guy. He's one part of a diorama. And then I've done the review on the Iron Studios Juggernaut vs. Wolverine. And review on my custom painted sideshow Hulk vs. Wolverine painted by Jason who does my just awesome, awesome job. So all three of those there's reviews on. Then below is kind of my X-23 Wolverine setup. So this is temporary, but a lot of stuff going on. And we're going to try and... At the back you have the custom, very hard to see with the reflection right now. In person it's very easy to see. X-23 Wolverine diorama. And then you have Sideshow's X-23 right in front. And I've done a review on every single piece. Paired with her companion piece, the Wolverine premium format. And these are right behind the X-23 Logan custom motorcycle. So I've done reviews on all these pieces. So this, these are all kind of dioramas. These are X-23s. These are larger enemies, Hulk. I do have, I think, three more Wolverine vs. Hulks. And then, moving over here, we have our silly characters. So, obviously, Chubby Wolverine kind of goes with Wolverines. Deadpool, Chubby Deadpool, Chubby Batman, and Bat Duck. I've done reviews on all of these pieces as well. And I have the same thing going on with the window. So here's a farther away view. And then below here, I have some custom risers coming for larger pieces. First one is the Fastball Special. If you'll notice, there is a different base with that than when I reviewed it. I have reviewed this custom base as well. I just haven't aired it yet, but I did that for space. And I have two other very large Wolverine dioramas, Wolverine vs. Ninjas, going right here. And then that brings us over to my Wolverine Deadpool display. These are DF120s from Magicase. So up top, We have the Sideshow Premium Formats, first the Deadpool. I think this is a spectacular spectacular piece. It really encompasses Deadpool and just the dynamics of it are really, really cool. I have not reviewed these ones, but... And then the Lady Deadpool I got because the portrait is just killer. I think uh, Eddie did uh, turn this one into a domino and that looks great too. And then in the middle is the ARP custom piece, Deadliest Mercenary. I don't think, I think these will be some of the first ones I sell, even though they are great. I just, I don't know. Eventually this will be a full Wolverine display. Here's kind of my current X-Force setup. I think XM is still the best cable. I know it's not as comic accurate, but to me, I just dig it. You guys have seen one of my favorite pieces, X-Force uh, Wolverine vs. Ninjas. And X-Force Deadpool Premium Format. They all look great together. Then at the bottom, we have Phase 2. I need to figure out how to get this up higher. It needs to be displayed. And again, all these Wolverine pieces I have reviewed. So, as you can see, lots of room down here. I need to figure out something to do with the cords, too. And XM uh, 
Weapon X, totally forgot about him. I took away the back monitors because they just take up too much room. I still think it looks awesome like that. So let's kind of back up here. So there's that display. So this is what I'm constantly looking at when I'm doing reviews. Traditionally, the camera is right about here. And we'll do a, another slow pan. The King Jackson sign stuff. Poker room. And again, at another time, I'll go through the uh, uh, autograph memorabilia. But again, we'll just do kind of a slow pan here. So kind of a unique setup. Bear with me here, guys. My other hand, I'm actually moving a chair around. And here's a, the Spider-Man setup. I still have, I think, two or three. I have some more Spider-Mans coming. I think Spider-Villains, I'm almost done. I think I still have uh, XM Doc Ock and maybe one more. Let's flip it around here. So that is it, guys. Once again, I apologize for the horrible lighting. I really hope you enjoyed this, though. And uh, a serious collector, their uh, collection, not only is their collection ever-changing, but how they display it. So I'll do updated room tours once I get everything done, uh, not only in this room, but all the other rooms. But I really appreciate you watching. Please drop me a subscribe and like if you have not already. If you have any questions on pieces that are not custom on where did you get it, please feel free to ask those as well. But uh, thanks for watching, guys. See you tomorrow for day six.